My whole entire family is in real estate. Yeah, my yeah. mother, my brother, my right. aunts, my uncle, my crew. two cousins. Yeah, yeah. The non-real estate side of the family definitely, definitely does not enjoy Thanksgiving talk. You know what I mean? We don't talk pop. We don't talk shit. We're talking about the market. Yeah, We're talking yeah. about projects. Hey everyone, my name is Mike Vassallo. For those of you that don't know me, uh, this is the first episode of Yeah, Yeah, What's the Rate? It's going to be our podcast platform. Uh, today on the first podcast of the season, I have my good friend and real estate guru, Nick Pappas. What's up, brother? What's going on, brother? Not much, thank man. You. Thank very you happy to, on. Very happy to be here. Thank so, you, thank you. I this too is my first podcast, so all right, you know, all we, right. could, we could share all the awkward uh, moments together. Yeah, we've already discussed a few of them already, so hopefully... Uh, this will go uh, like we're sitting at the bar, right? That's Having it. Having a drink. That's like, all we're doing. I'm glad we, we discussed that we're going to wear matching outfits. <laughs> yes, you know, yes. Cute tops, J. black C. jeans. Penny, uh, spring uh, <laughs> collection right here. Black jeans with the black shoes. So. That's it, brother. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I just kind of kind of getting right into it. I think, uh, um, I mean, like I said, we've known each other for quite some time. Obviously, have been working together for the last couple of years. Um, and I always kind of think that it's a very cool question. And I don't even know if I know the answer to this, but exactly how you got into the real estate industry. Yeah, so uh, I guess you could say I got my license for shits and gigs back in the day. Um, originally, I went to culinary school. I went to Johnson & Wales. Shout out to Jay Wu. Nice. Um, I wanted to be a chef. I left early. I had a catering company going. Um, that didn't work out. I kind of lost my passion for the culinary industry. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um you know, was kind of lost for like a year or two. I was in my early 20s. I wanted to become a police officer really bad. I've got a, you know, a lot of law enforcement, family and friends. Yep. A lot of the people that I always looked up to in life were uh, were police officers. So I was kind of pursuing that, um, you know, while I was bartending and working in restaurants. And then uh, I kind of, uh, you know, it was, it was at a time before... The NYPD, they got those pay increases. I think they were making like $28,000 a year or something like that. Oh, yeah. It was crazy. Like That was the starting salary or whatever. <clears throat> and I've always had an entrepreneurial itch. My uncle, Jerry Gucciardo, he's a, he's a pretty big developer, um, flipper. He's got a uh, construction company, Atlantic Shores um, Builders and Developers, Atlantic Shores Construction. You know, he told me, just get your real estate license, you know, just to have it. It's better to have it and, you know see see what that can see which avenue that could sure, take you to. Sure. So long story short, um I decided that I, I I just being a police officer just wasn't for me. I wanted to give the entrepreneurial route a shot, okay. you know, while I was still young and could still fall on my face. I was bartending, I was doing construction with my uncle and I had my real estate license. I ran into uh, an old friend of mine, Billy Dunn, at a uh at a house party, told him what I was doing. Okay. Um, you know, he told me his parents were looking to sell his house, sell, sell their house, and uh, that was my first listing. And then the rest was history, man. I just completely fell in love with the industry. Um, I developed a huge passion for it, and uh, you know, I kept because I needed steady source of income. So you know, I was I was still bartending, I was still working construction while I was still trying to build my real estate business. Right. The busier I got in real estate. I dropped the construction because that was the least amount of money okay. and the hardest amount of work. And then, you know, it got to the point where I was negotiating deals. I had to step off the bar on Friday nights, you know, to kind of negotiate people's houses and offers that I put in. And at that point in time, I was like, you know what? Uh, I think I'm ready to dip my toes in and just go full, go all in, go all in, in real nice, estate. Nice. Yeah. I didn't know that. I had no idea. So I have a similar story, to be completely honest with you, which I had no idea in all the time that we've discussed and spoke uh, about how you got here because uh, I had graduated college, was doing construction. Uh, shout out to uh, Simat Construction and uh, Greg and all the guys. Um, and my, I came home from day, one day from work and uh, my brother's friend was over and he's like, oh, I'm doing mortgages. I'm going to be making all this money, blah, blah, blah. And um, at the time I was waiting for the NYPD to call me as well. Mm -hmm. And there was a hiring freeze and I, I had no, I, I wanted to get into law enforcement and I was taking every single service, civil service test at the time. Same. And um, literally swinging the hammer, framing most of the houses we were doing in Massapequa. And then uh, my mom says to my brother's friend, hey, can you get my son an interview? I didn't even know what a freaking mortgage was, to be honest with you at the time. 
Uh, so I took the interview, I drank the Kool-Aid, hmm. and here yeah. are 15 years later, still have financial equities. God like, bless you, brother. It's just crazy. So it, it's just such a funny story, like the background of the construction, police department. Yeah. You know, and, and here we are, like you said, uh, in an entrepreneurial type of job. Um, yeah. You know. um, I When I was younger, like after the whole culinary thing, I always imagined my life and my future as being a police officer. Um and then, you know, when I got into real estate, I, I kind of thought it was a little bit of a pipe dream. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I yeah, feel completely yeah. blessed to be doing what I'm doing. Like, I never imagined that I'd be able to do it at this scale. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, no, like, agreed, agreed, yeah. It, it, it was a dream that I achieved. Yeah, so. yeah. Both my parents were teachers, you know, so it was like summers off, yeah. you know, home by three. Like, that's kind of what I always envisioned myself doing. Yeah. Um, so going down this route of commission and not being structured and, and everything and kind of doing it on your own was... Um, you know, it was scary yeah. without a doubt, you know, hundred percent little by little and, and being disciplined and stuff. Like I said, here we are today. So, and here we are, um, my whole entire family is in real estate. Yeah, my yeah. mother, my brother, my right. aunt, my uncle, my crew. two cousins. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, I mean, yeah. And I can't imagine doing anything else. Like I said, I love it. So yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it's cool. It's the, cool so. the, the non real estate side of the family definitely, definitely does not enjoy Thanksgiving talk. You know what I mean? We don't talk pop. <laughs> we don't talk shit. We're talking about the market. Yeah, we're talking yeah. about projects. Of course, um, of course. yeah, yeah. So you got the project in Sag Harbor that you guys are working on. We do, too, right? we do. Yeah, that's nice. uh, yeah, it's a pretty kick ass. You just project. knocked it down. Have you started framing or anything yet? Or so we um we find we got we did everything um we got the architectural review board um we got permits went through we knocked the house down we trenched it out um you know we the the foundation now we're doing some framing i think uh they just sent us a picture today our uh the first floor is completely framed so oh, now awesome. we're going to start right, the second floor nice, yeah it's nice. exciting moving along i yeah. love it out there you know that yeah you do i love it out there <laughs> you got you, you got you got two rental properties out there we got two in east hampton yeah so far so good knock on wood we got them during covid um and like i said it's been a blessing so far so I've just been renting them out and doing that for the time being hopefully one day i'll be able to enjoy them and the kids uh yeah. you know at a later date but for right now it's you know purely investment at this point now how how, how do you feel about being a landlord like what if, what would you say you've learned um, from your first year to this? I would say this is your and third now, year now doing it, right? Yeah, it's the th this is our fourth summer we're going into. I mean, honestly, it's, so it's a different clientele out there, which we didn't really realize uh, compared to having properties, you know, in like Nassau or even like in Su Suffolk, like single family homes. The rentals out there are seasonal. Yeah. Um, and almost work like a commercial triple net lease where it's like you're getting a tenant in there from Memorial Day to Labor Day. Mm -hmm. You know, not only are they paying the rent for obviously that time frame, but they're also paying the gas, the electric, the lawn, you know, lawn cutting, pool, um, the, the Wi-Fi, garbage disposal. So, I mean, literally, you're not on the hook for anything as the owner, which is great. Um, and landlord wise, knock on wood, we haven't had any like crazy issues up until this point. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of scrubbing that we do when we pick the people that we're putting in the house for that time period. Um, but other than like small maintenance things like dishwasher, we had a broken pipe that flooded the basement quickly, you know, at, at this past winter. Um, but nothing like crazy. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it's been a great experience so far and being a landlord sometimes can be scary. Uh, Hell yeah. you hear stories obviously all the time in the industry yes. and it's, it's crazy. I mean, crazy so um yeah we we haven't had that yet and hopefully we never do yep <laughs> let's hope not let's hope not um so that's good though so you, you you basically what i'm saying is like you got it down to a science like as far as like you know what turnover yeah we got a whole team on in the place. property yeah, we, we okay. hooked up with somebody out there that has a whole team so we're not like when we first did it we were going out there and we were washing the sheets and doing mm -hmm. everything and like just from a time management perspective it's, it didn't make sense anymore my brother-in-law lives out there and it, it became too much for him as well so we hooked up with this guy that basically from snow removal handyman we had a wasp nest in one of the houses in the tree like the guy came and did so totally hands off they, they run itself uh, the cleaning crew that we have lets us know if we need to like put in new towels or pillows or if something's broken or needs to be replaced. So it, we are totally hands off. Nice. Um, which is cool. Of course, the first year or two we weren't, and it was yeah. a freaking nightmare. Driving like two hours just to do something for five minutes to drive two hours home was yeah not, no no it's not, not, not fun. Not worth it. And you know, drop yeah. going to SAG to drop off a permit or something to oh, get yeah. back in the car. It sucks. I one mean, lane just, in, one lane yeah, out. Yeah, it's not, not fun. It's not fun. It's yeah. not fun. So uh, yeah, but other than that. It's been great. Um, wanted to touch base because I guess the topic of conversation lately has been obviously the market coming into the new year. Yes. Um, 
It's been a little crazy. Buyers, homeowners, what are they going to sell? Rates are supposed to come down. So, um, you know, what is your sense of like, since what are we, six weeks into the new year? Like, what have you seen um, thus far? The buyers are back, dude. Um, I, I, I did an open house uh a week and a half ago in Patchog, and it was like a fucking Taylor Swift concert. And I right. swear, I'm not even kidding you, dude. There was a hundred people in. Yeah. Um, I would say there was probably 45 to 50 buying couples, um, and just about every single one of them showed up with their aunts, uncles, mothers, cousins, and extended family. So we probably had Crazy. well over a hundred, you know, people yeah. going yeah. through the house. Um, it was steady from beginning to end, um, but. I'm also starting to see a lot more listing activity for myself personally okay. um, than I typically would this time of the year. Yeah. yeah um, you know, I, I probably took, I, I want to say between six, seven listings, you know, between January to today. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's huge. Yeah. Couple it's of huge, them, yeah. couple of them aren't ready to, to hit the market this it's month. Right. You know, a couple of them want to wait till like March, April. Sure. But um I've never taken this amount of listing appointments um in my career in at this time of the year yeah, yeah, ever. Yeah, yeah. So I mean if that That's a great sign. Yeah. If yeah, that's a hopefully that's yeah. a good forecast yeah. for what it's going to be like because I mean we definitely need more inventory hitting this market cuz th these buyers are just getting crushed. Yeah. I yeah. think same thing with the rates and everything going down a little bit. I think buyers now are realizing this is the new norm um, and are getting back into the market to say like, hey, I don't want to rent anymore or I don't want to live it, you know, with my family or whatever it may be. And, and now kind of just it is what it is. Yeah. Um, knowing that if they want the dream of home ownership, this is what it is for now. And then maybe refinance or something at a later date, you know, once these rates do come down. You know, I got to um, tell you, though, and tell me if you think I'm wrong. I mean, where, where the rates are at right now. Now that like the uh, the shock has has settled a yep. little bit, you know, I, I think they're I think it's they're in a safe place right now. I think if the rates, in my opinion, were were to drop down to the fives, oh, it would create mass exodus. I said that I've been telling people you're going to be paying um, you're going to be paying eight hundred thousand dollars for you know yep. for a ranch in Mastic. Yeah, you have so no many, offense, Mastic. Yeah, you're cool. <laughs> Um, you have so many people on the sidelines. So, I mean, if the rates were to go down to 5%, yes, now the buying power of these buyers are, are back in and now it's affordable, but now you're going to have, you know, that many more people putting offers on properties. Yeah. Is that a listing call? Probably number eight. <laughs> no. But what, what no. I'm, what I'm saying is for the, the, the middle class. Oh, for the buyers. It's, it's going to destroy people. Yep. Yep. We just had now an offer that was accepted yesterday. Um, client had to waive appraisal and, um, wave the uh, homeowner uh the inspection yeah i mean this is going back to like covid times where we were like you know over ask waving inspection waving appraisal so yeah if the rates go down that low i think that we're going to have that kind of covid situation all over again where it was just insanity yeah um, and i mean for it sucks you for, know it's not you know it's not affordable anymore you know unless i mean unless you've got just a stupid amount of money in the bank man and or you you personally are handy or you're a contractor yourself i mean just you know, depending on the house. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Waving a home inspection, not doing a home inspection is dangerous. I think it's nuts. I mean, I think it's crazy. You're buying Absolutely something nuts. for half a million dollars, whatever it may be, and you're waving that. I think it's a risk that's not, I wouldn't be willing to take, to be honest Fuck with yeah. you. Um, but I see a lot, a lot of first-time home buyers now are getting gifts um, for, and help from family, you know, because again, it's just not, putting down 20% used to be a thing that was, you know, oh, you're going to get that offer accepted, where that's kind of like, Every day, 20% down. That's not a thing to really yeah. talk about anymore. Um, so I do see a lot of my buyers getting um, gifts, you know, putting down significant down payments to get the offers accepted or taking smaller loans for it to be more affordable for mm -hmm. them to even want to be able to, to buy a house to have a payment that's in a comfortable level. Yeah, and so. ton ton of cash out there too. I've seen, yeah. like, you know, you always see a which you know ca cash is amazing, but I'm I'm seeing I'm seeing more and more of it. You know what I mean? More frequently, it's like yes. almost every single house that I have listed, I've gotten cash a offers. minimum of two to three cash offers. Yeah, you know is. what I mean? So like for the buyers out there that are in the trenches, man, like you know if you think your agent's full of shit, like oh my god, you know how could it be? I I put I put an offer in sixty grand above asking and it bad. didn't get accepted and. You know, oh my God, really? These people have that cash out there? They're out there, man, and 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 they're throwing their weight around. That's that's for sure. I mean, one one of the uh, one of the offers that I got, it was a company where proof of funds, 
It was an everyday house. You know, the asking price was just a little bit below six. And I don't, these people had like $4 million in the bank. Yeah. It's, and you can't compete with that as a first time home buyer. That's no. been the, that's been the biggest problem. So yeah. hopefully I think if we get in the low sixes, high fives, that would be a happy medium where it won't create chaos. But that's gonna we'll, I think that's you know, gonna, that's gonna think it will be it's gonna be a fucking oh, bloodbath. Right, let's see. Dude. Let's see. Five, fives is gonna it's gonna be a bloodbath, man. All right. You know. But let's see. I mean, look, we we did it during COVID and we figured it out. So what the hell? I mean, we'll, we'll do it again if we have to. Yeah, that's for sure. You know, I mean, I was just saying that the other day we were a client of mine got an accepted offer on a, on a million dollar or whatever, one two, one three or whatever, and it's like you know mansion tax for one percent of whatever the, the sales price is. A million dollars on an island is not a mansion anymore. No, you know, it's like no. a three bedroom colonial. It's a million it's, dollars. It's, it's a gonna ranch, be, it's, you know? it's gonna, it's it's gonna be the medium home value yeah. pretty soon. You know? so. Again, like you were saying about your phone. Uh, for the month of January, where for us as loan officers and banks, I mean, you are usually dead. Um, that's the best time to kind of do your vacations and stuff. And the phone has been ringing. We've been pre-approving people, getting accepted offers. Yeah, uh, Buyers are coming out of the woodwork and getting re-pre-approved and getting their pre-approvals updated and stuff. So, um, yeah, I mean, we've been busy for the, for January, February, where it's usually tumbleweeds. Yeah, you know, we're rolling. So. That, that well, that too. So not just so like that. The, what I was talking about with the listing, that was one aspect of it mm-hmm. because you know that's that's the um, that's the side of inventory, right? Yep. So that that's how I could use myself as a small sample size for you know you know seeing or a projection for what kind of inventory might be hitting the market. But now on that flip side, um, I'm having a ton of buyers come out of the woodwork, and last year. Um, I'm usually very, very buyer heavy. Right. Last year, most of my my buyer clientele, you know, decided to take a back seat, or a good portion of them got shopped out of the market once once those uh, those rate hikes increased. You know what I mean? But now I'm starting to see a lot of buyers coming out of the woodwork. Right. You know, good, good. So it's good to see that because, yeah, like I said, it kind of not just is helping you and I, but it's helping the whole industry. That's for um, sure. For other agents, other loan officers, buyers, sellers, uh, we need a little shot of adrenaline. I think. So, uh, I know we were touching on before we went on. Um, we were talking about open houses. Yes, and like kind of like I don't even call it etiquette or, or what's going on, but it definitely is a frenzy hmm. um, as to like what's going on, how the how these open houses are handled, whether the agent is going with the client, the client's going alone, the lines that are waiting out the door, the stuff that's going on inside the house. Yeah, um, and I had just done an open house a couple of weeks ago and kind of witnessed some of the same, where I was just like, "Holy shit!" I'm like, "This is crazy." You yeah. Know? Um, so I, I wanted to, you know, to, uh, maybe share some of the experiences or, or things that you've seen, um, and, and, and mine the same, just, uh, cause I got a couple of chuckles, uh, from some of the people that were walking through the house or comments that were made and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, w- to buyers out there, just don't be weird, dude. You know what I mean? <laughs> like some of these people just are very like, you know, you think it's their first time interacting with with other people out in society. Right. Um, you know, so I, I, that could be kind of like because they go into other open houses. I don't know if other real estate agents are uh, making them feel weird or strange, but right. I'm seeing a lot of buyers out there, very skittish, very standoffish, you know, and I try to make people as relaxed as possible in my open house. All I ask is that, you know, you sign in, that's it, you know, and, you know, some people, when you walk into an open house, you know, they tell you, a lot of people tell you about the market, what to expect, this and that, but um, people don't really necessarily go over what to expect at an open house, you know, Um, you're going to be asked to sign in, Um, an agent's probably going to ask you to sign a couple different disclosures, one's going to be the agency disclosure, that discloses that, you know, they work for the seller, Um, the other one's going to be the fair housing anti-discrimination disclosure, that, you know, basically just goes over that like, hey, um, you know, we, we, we don't discriminate. If you feel discriminated against, here's here's a number that you can call to, uh, you know, make a complaint or whatever. And uh, that's that that's really it. Right. Yeah, no, same. I, I had like, I, I laughed. The sign-in sheet's always that moment of awkwardness. I guess, you know, like- Yeah, they like, think, I don't want to know um, your, your, your mother's maiden name right, and your, like and your fucking, your, your first pet's name. Yeah, so it's like, you know, the agent I was working with was letting people within the door, you know, in the front door, because it was a small ranch, there was a line down the block, and literally you probably couldn't fit more than maybe two or three couples in at a time. Yeah. Otherwise, they, the flow of the house just didn't work. So um, literally, like, you know, she'd be letting them in, I would be doing the sign in, and it was like that awkwardness of like, well, what are you asking from? Yeah, I mean, the, ag- the agency disclosure literally says in big letters, this is not 
out of cut. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, so. yeah. So there's that moment of awkwardness and stuff, and then I guess after that. But uh, yeah, the interaction stuff. I, me as a loan officer, when I'm at an open house, I, I, I'll be honest with you, I'm there really just to help the agent. I try not to pry and ask questions and do anything really with the clients or the prospective buyers coming in. Because like you said, there is that awkwardness. So for me to start asking them like, have you been pre-approved? Are you yeah. working with a bank? Are you open? Like, so I try to not to take that road and like maybe do a follow-up with after or if you connect with somebody, then I'll, I'll, I'll do that follow-up and stuff. But I noticed that most people don't want to be bothered to start talking about their finances. No, they, they you don't. Know, you know, whether, whether it's great or bad, it's just something where you're not going to capture um, you know, somebody's financial background to decide whether or not this is a, an eligible person yeah. that's mortgageable, you know? that Like, that's it too. Like, and for, for me, my style with open houses, like I'm not there to convert you and to, you know, get you to work with me, even though that would be freaking awesome. I would love to work with you. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm very low key. You come in, what's up? My name's Nick, you know? Take a look around. If you have any questions, I'm here to answer any questions you have. But you know, I'm not. I'm not up your ass. Yeah. You know, I try not to do the lines. I can't stand the lines. Yeah, um, they're infuriating. I noticed yeah. that. You know, sometimes you know, like what you were just saying, if it's a house that's smaller and you got a line wrapped around the block, you can't have you know 30 people in your you know 700 yeah. square foot ranch. But you know, if it's a decent house, you keep the flow of traffic going. Mm -hmm. um, so I try not to do the lines because typically. Someone's waiting out there for 45 minutes. By the time they get in that house, they're pissed yeah, and they yeah, hate your yeah, guts. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Definitely do. But when you walk into a house, what is the state? Like four seconds, eight seconds? I have no idea. You know right away whether this house is for you or not. Like I, I know there's some sort of whatever. I know when my wife and I walked into the house that we live in now, like within seconds, we're like, this is the one. Yeah. So it's like, imagine staying on that line for 45 minutes, walking in and be like, oh shit, this is not the one. <laughs> you know, and then you wasted 45 minutes, um, you know, now having to go to the next open house. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. But you know what? I don't know, man. Some people I feel like too, and, and listen, it, what, what other agents decide to do, like that's cool, are st stuck in that like COVID mentality of, of the lines at the, oh, I don't remember that before. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. remember. I mean, you know, the market wasn't as crazy pre COVID, but I, I don't remember. I don't know. I'm not yeah. about the lines. Yeah, but open houses or whatever, like I said, definitely has been wild seeing like some of the social media posts that people are putting with the lines and down the block. Or, yes. You know, the house isn't even opened up or whatever in the line. Is, and it's know. fucking January, February. God. Yeah, yeah. Finally had some snow the other day, which was cool. That was it's nice. Snow day. They were stoked. You know, what's your goals for this year or like what is your two-year plan, three-year plan? Like where do you want to be in your real estate career or your investing in real estate career you're you i'm know, at i'm at such uh you, you know i i my my two-year plan my my, my three-year plan like i i'm kind of like in the process of rethinking and refiguring things out because you know i'm really really falling in love with the building and doing the new construction yeah. um you know, I'm I'm hoping I'm praying that that this is going to to really work out. Um, I've got a tremendous opportunity to learn. You know, I'm doing this entire project out in Sag Harbor with with my family, which is something that I love doing. I love working with my family. Um, you know, two or three years, I, I I would love to. You know, obviously, I'm not going to be running jobs and doing stuff like that, but right. I'd I'd really like to be, um, you know, more informed and more involved with the day to day and, you know, right. meeting with the architects and, you know, going and, you know, orchestrating the subcontractors and doing stuff like that. Being more um, hands on, you know, hundred percent, even doing more than like, uh, doing more than one a year, you know, maybe doing a couple of years. Yes. A like hundred yeah. percent. Um, and then just kind of like this year, I'm, I'm not focused on set production or the amount of money that I want to make. I'm, I'm more focused on, um, being consistent with my money making activities. Agreed. Um, I feel like, you know, you might set a goal like I want to do twenty five million in production this year. I want to sell thirty six. You know what I'm right, saying? Yeah, like, give you numbers and stuff. Yeah, I'm not doing that. I'm I'm focused on my my consistency. Like I said, my money making activities, my consistency day to day. Okay. Waking up every morning. You know, doing my thing, getting into the office, making my phone calls, doing my follow ups, doing my prospecting, you know, just getting back in that routine, having all the systems that I've created over the years and fine tuning them and and just religiously working them. Right. And yeah, yeah. and I feel that if I do that, you know, 
all my listings, the money, my production, everything like just that follow. is yeah. just going to skyrocket. Organically, yeah. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I'm, think, I'm just crazy focused on that right now. Yeah, yeah. Last year, I said the same thing. Like, looking back, I feel like I got comfortable. And a lot of the things and the basics that I used to always do, I stopped doing. Definitely and, got a little comfortable last year. And I was year. like, shit. I was like, what's going on? And, you know, uh, being that, you know, my wife, Jen, works with me and stuff. She's always, <coughs> you know, I'm like a basket case or whatever, always trying to like overthink or overanalyze or what can we do? What are we not doing and stuff? And, you know, I, I look back and I said, shit, you know, like, let's just go back to the basics. Yeah. You know, like go back to what's worked for the last 15 years. Like, um, and, and that's what we've done over the last probably six to eight weeks. And within just a short time period, we're rolling. 100%, you know, so man. You don't got to reinvent the wheel. Uh, you know, we're not, we're not, uh, you know, rocket science, you know, here it's, it's basic stuff. So if you just, I'm definitely not a rocket scientist. No, hell no, neither am I. <laughs> but you know, if you just put the basics to, you know, like I said, the consistency every day, whatever it may be working out, like same thing, new year, I was like, I'm gonna start working out like everybody does. And I've been consistent with it every day I do it. And it, it's something that like, if I don't do it, I feel like unaccomplished for that day. Yeah. So same thing with when it comes to the mortgages and stuff and, and, and my clientele, my referral base, even this podcast, this was a two or three year plan in the making. Freaking finally we're here, you know, doing this. And yeah. This was like a bucket list thing where I'm like, I need to do it. We need to do it. I think, um, I think, know. uh, sorry, not to cut. Yeah, so, no, no, no. I think, I think a lot of agents out there get overly hyper focused on trying to do everything. And you know what I mean? Yep, trying to yep. reinvent the wheel and catch up with yeah. this and catch up with that. Like myself included, you know, I got really caught up in that last year and I was just kind of like chasing my tail, spinning my wheels, you know, yeah. and this year I, I really, I really took a step back. I looked at my business as a whole and you know, where, where does 99.9% .9 of my, my business comes from referrals, right? Yeah. So, you know, this year, uh, you know, aside from, you know, just working on my consistency and everything like that, I looked at what works, right? Mm -hmm. The fact that most of my business comes from my referrals from my past client. Okay, cool. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna just be like the best at keeping in touch with them and, you know, staying top of mind with my past clients, right? And then second, what do I got to do, you know, that I don't do? that's going to give me some sort of different growth. You right. know what I mean? Like stepping out of my comfort zone, you know, doing stuff like this, um, putting a little bit more content out there, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. I feel the same way. Like with the podcast thing is like, I kind of look back, like if you do look at agents that are 10, 15 years older than me or even us, and then you look at agents that are 10, 15 years younger, there's like a huge swing of, from the technology, social media, uh, from print mailings that the older generation may do versus, you know, the 25 year old real estate who comes in his guns blazing with yeah, but TikTok and all of that stuff. You, you know what though? The, what, and I'll tell you this. So my company just merged with uh Coldwell banker, American homes. Right. So I've got a lot of old school agents in there. Mm -hmm. Right. And you know, they're not, they're not out there doing content and doing this and doing that. Right. But these fucking people are, are pumping out like 30, 40, 50 million dollars a year in sales, man. And they're doing the time tested, you know, old school stuff that is brand. never, ever going out of style. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, that is true. I never really thought of it that way. I guess for me personally is like, I felt like in the next 20 years, I'll be what, 60? Holy shit. Um, you know, and I just feel like if I'm, if I don't have that social media presence, I'm not on these platforms, you know, these first time home buyers with technology, even the stuff that Waller's doing with AI and everything with uh, his companies, it's crazy. So just imagine another 5, 10, 15, this chat GBT that people are using AI, like it's just wild. So you, I just like, you being up with the times almost, you know, to just be relevant. You, you need, you definitely 100% yeah. need to do that. Right. You know what I mean? You, you always need to adapt. But the old school methods of selling real estate and prospecting for real estate, those are never not going to work. Yes. You know what I mean? Yep, yep. So it's almost like, you know, you build your foundation on that because that's never going right. out of style. And you could sprinkle in some of the other stuff. And then, yeah, and then yeah. doing all the content creation and all that. So you need to adapt with that because yeah. if you don't, then, right. then you are going to fall beside. But it's not do that or just die. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, if that was the case, then, you know, you, you wouldn't have, like, your your Nordina Cardis and your Janet Pushies. You know what I mean? Right, like, right, 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 they, they're out right. there killing it. Yeah, correct. Agreed. All right, so let, let's wrap it up. Um, You know, like, again, I, I appreciate you uh, taking the time out of your day uh, to come down and, and 
be our inaugural uh, yeah man yeah you know uh, guest here on the yeah yeah what's your rate um, this name just for everybody is in our office going back forever we always joked around that like when someone would call or a prospective client or a buyer you know they don't want to hear about the different programs and everything <clears throat> and all that stuff they always just want to know yeah yeah what's the rate and they don't want to like know all the other stuff that goes behind it so it's kind of been a thing in the office that we've been saying for years and i thought it would be appropriate for uh, the name of the podcast so yeah yeah what's the rate i don't know if you could see it perfectly in this clip but um that it's a very cool sign the, uh, thank you thank you well, and that's it so i appreciate you coming on <laughs> thanks for thank having you me very brother. much thank you very much we and, go get uh, a cocktail yeah, after let's this go, baby that's right yeah. in this room. i wanted to set up a little bar in here but there's not you enough should. room so you should. that gives us the excuse to walk down the street now and grab some surely i could wet my whistle there you go northport hotel here we come <laughs>